what I'm about to tell you ties in with the synthetic telepathy, with the silent subliminal sound, and with the V2K, and with the thought reading. And it is what I would call thought amplification. From what I've discovered, some of the signal is transmitted electromagnetically, but I'll come to that in a moment. First, I'll explain my experience of it and how I discovered it, what I used to record it. Then it will become apparent that this is how the mind reading, the synthetic telepathy is accomplished. This is how other people are linking in to your thoughts. I have an electromagnetic receiver um, wired up to a tape recorder, which I have on my person. This is um, actively recording. This is just a cheap electromagnetic receiver, the type that you use to hear what somebody using a conduction loop um, hearing aid is hearing. It's about £12 in the UK. That's the cost of it. Obviously, with a more expensive one, you'll get a wider and a better sound with less interference. This is one of the things that happened. Okay, I go to the sink. I've got a cafetiere in my hand and I'm going to rinse the cafetiere. <clears throat> and I have a thought, which is that I may block the sink because there's quite a lot of coffee grounds in the cafetiere. So after running the taps, I switch the tap off and I go to the bin. And I realise that I have the cafetiere in one hand and I have the cafetiere lid in the other and I need to lift the bin lid. This is leading somewhere, believe me. So I managed to do something with that and I lift the bin lid and I empty the cafetiere contents in the bin. Right, what I do after this is play back the recording that I've done. This was accidental. I just had the electromagnetic receiver on record because I was testing where I was being, where the transmissions, uh, V2K transmissions, were they following me around my home or were they stronger in certain areas of my home? Okay. What I found upon listening back to the recording was that when I used, in this particular instance, when I used thinking to determine an action, such as in problem solving, it was reiterated back and picked up by the electromagnetic receiver, not in my voice. It was spoken back and commented on in the um, gang stalker's voice, one of the ones that I recognise from having made previous comments, which I, in the beginning, I assumed that these people were always in the locality. And then after a while, it became obvious that these were transmissions to fool me. So the nature of this feedback upon my action was this. At this point, where I was stood at the sink, and I was looking, and I thought, oh no, I'll block the sink if I empty this cafetiere down the sink. All that wasn't spoken. What was spoken in the transmission, which was my thoughts, were, you'll block the sink. That's all. And then when I went to the bin, and lifted the bin lid up, just before I did, I was thinking, mm, what am I going to do? Uh, but it was very quick. Because I was obviously I wasn't thinking all the other times I was on autopilot, but the points where I actually concentrated and I actually used problem solving and what was I going to do next, that was spoken back loud and in, in the bin um, scenario. It was, you'll have to lift the lid. That's all. That's all that was spoken back. There's a lot of other examples that this makes sense of that have happened previously, um, such as we'll follow her back down and things like that, which I found on my recorder in this exact same voice, which is obviously a transmission. Um, at the time of performing these actions, I could not hear anything. I can always hear a tinnitus, which is very painful. And the tinnitus sounds like it's coming from my head, which isn't unusual. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say this sounds like that to them, the, the synthetic tinnitus. 
and I also have um, very strange headaches which I can point to a particular point in my skull and other problems with my ears as well which I've put online which are not normal they're not diagnosable as normal illnesses um, to learn this is extremely saddening because the mind has somewhat been invaded the privacy of the mind I've been aware of that because in the first instance you believe that your home is bugged or that perhaps you have a kind of little um, receiver planted somewhere and then you begin to think that when it's happening when you visit someone's house some friend that perhaps because your phone the battery is out perhaps their phones are being used they're being they've found your friends numbers and they're using them and switching them on to gain information which is not unlikely in this scenario and then when you discover something like this is happening you think to yourself well if they can read the thoughts that I'm using to problem solve or that I'm concentrating on very hard if they can amplify those thoughts which they are doing and you've got to remember that that was an electromagnetic receiver and you've got to remember that it was picking up a massive amount of interference which is white noise which is the sort of sound you will get if you put it near say copper pipes or something which act as uh, like a conductor but then there's nothing going through it so you get a lot of white noise and those things were in the back of the white noise I've also used this electromagnetic receiver on a few other experiments as well I will try and clean up the sound files when I get hold of a suitable platform to do it and I will I will try and loop them and put them online and do um like a kind of a, a little mini documentary on them and the source of them and that what is actually being done to try and prove this is being done it, it is already I've looked into it it's already possible and it was done with a, a real live human being in 2009 and it was done for the purpose of allowing somebody that was paralyzed and to speak to communicate their thoughts via a brain machine interface and it was very successful but it took time in the experiment for the person to learn how to use this process so it may be that these scenarios that they're, they're doing to abuse the target individual which are every single day and they're absolutely horrific it's horrific psychological torture and these may be to facilitate this and to because what I've noticed is that those two things were, were problem solving what am I going to do with the bin lid yeah and mm, I can't it's going to blow sink right what am I going to, those were the things that, that was amplified the thoughts that were amplified so if if you're being harassed followed abused then obviously that is a problem so you are going to use some kind of problem solving and I think for some reason that is easiest for them to hook onto in your brain or that is the information that they want the part of the brain that does the the problem solving so if as a tagged individual if one is radiating one's thoughts electromagnetically among other things I don't know why it didn't pick it up crystal clear I don't know why there was interference it might be because the receiver was cheap <laughs> Uh, there might be some other reason which I suspect also one of the things I've noticed is that before I bought this receiver I've done a few different experiments with it that I used just a normal mp3 recorder to record silent sound when I was asleep I was curious what was being transmitted to me while I was asleep and it's peculiar that the actual recorder can pick up things that are not that you're not aware of that are subliminal so obviously something has been done to my ears um probably the way that they or the way that the signal is transmitted the phase of the signal 
so that when it hits the point this is all supposition but it would it would make things why I can't actually hear it but the recorder can the recorder can pick things up and also why the electromagnetic receiver can pick some things up a beat with a massive amount of white noise and interference which incidentally sounds not unlike my tinnitus so back to this transmission of thoughts um, amplification of thoughts of the target if the, if the target's thoughts are amplified then they can be read and they are being read because they are being fed back on occasion to the target where the target feels that the home's bugged um, and I've had many, many, many instances where I've wondered, how do they know that? And I thought, oh, they must have switched somebody's phone on and bugged it. Or, uh, and then, how have this? But then I had that situation which was incredible where I had earbuds on and I'd recorded affirmations of my own voice, speaking affirmations. And these were on an MP3 player which I had earbuds on. And a complete stranger who'd gangstalked me previously sat nearby and lip synced. When I looked him in the eyes, he, he looked really shocked, like, <gasps> almost scared. But he was, he was lip-syncing to what was exactly going on in, in my MP, on my MP3 player that I was listening to. Um, so that was a bit of a shock. And this is another shock. For anybody who thinks this is too fantastic or doesn't believe that brain-machine interfaces are in existence then um, you can check it out I discovered this after the fact obviously when you discover something like this you want to investigate it and the um, actual brain to machine interface was actually done on a real person in 2009 and you, you can check it out it's um, there's some papers about it and you may get some other information as well on Google. And it was by somebody with a very unusual name. And it was Gunther F.H. Brumberg, J.S. And the paper was called A Wireless Brain Machine Interface for Real-Time Speech Synthesis. And that was 2009. If you type that in, it should bring up the, the research paper and also the fact that they successfully performed this on a human being and how it was done um, and that was in 2009 and it was wireless completely wireless also as obviously is this that is um, being perpetrated on me right okay thank you god bless <laughs>